Have you ever wondered what it's like to work in law enforcement? From deputies on patrol, forensics, to some of our cold cases and how some of our officers give back to the community. We'll share stories from the hardworking men and women who serve the citizens of York County. This is YCSO Behind the Badge, the official podcast of the York County Sheriff's Office. Welcome to Behind the Badge, the official podcast of the York County Sheriff's Office. By now, if you're a subscribed listener of the podcast, you know each week we bring, uh, give you a behind-the-scenes look at the York County Sheriff's Office. We have stories from your neighbors, the hardworking men and women who serve the citizens of York County who work here, people just like you. Hi, I'm Trent Ferris, a public information officer for the York County Sheriff's Office and also your host for the next 30 or so minutes. And as always, if you get a chance, go check us out on all of our social media pages, the big ones, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, YouTube, where you can stay up to date with what's going on in the county. And you could subscribe to the podcast so you don't miss an episode. We're on the Anchor Podcasting Service, Apple Podcast, Google Podcast, and Spotify, to name of the big ones. And lastly, Sign up today for those notify me alerts straight to your phone and email at yorkcountysheriff.com. On this episode of Behind the Badge, we're going to talk to the woman in charge of possibly what is the most un- misunderstood sciences in law enforcement due to popular television shows like CSI, NCIS, all that stuff. Emily Campbell-Smith is in charge of our forensic biology lab here at the York County Sheriff's Office, most commonly known as the DNA lab. But it's technically called the forensic biology lab, correct? That's correct. Emily, thank you for joining us today. And tell us uh, a little bit about yourself for all the viewers out there in uh, podcast land. Tell us about, I mean, we go down there, I go down and visit you. You've got like 50 degrees on the wall from multiple universities and masters and that's why i call you doctor even though you don't have a phd in anything yet yet no i do not have a phd in anything yet (laughs) (laughs) but um yeah so my name is emily campbell smith i'm the dna technical leader of the york county sheriff's office forensic biology lab and i have been working here for about oh oh seven years seven years let's go with that (laughs) you started about a year after i did that's about right yeah, I've been here um, eight. So 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, Almost seven years. Seven years. Yes. Do the math. That's years. why you're a scientist. Do the math quick in your head. Right. That's about right. I've been here eight, and you came about a year after I did ish. Yes. Yeah, yes. so that's right. Yes. I remember we came. We came. <laughs> right. You're course. probably like, who's that loud guy? <laughs> of course. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so yes, I've been here for almost seven years now, and um, I uh, have a bachelor's degree in biochemistry and cell biology. I have a master's degree in business administration. What? And a master's degree in pharmacy with an emphasis in forensic biology and DNA analysis. So my job requires me to have a master's degree in science. Of course. Um, I would I would think so. <laughs> right. And in order to be an analyst, however, you have to have a degree in um, a science-related or forensic science-related area that includes four specific courses that are mandated by the FBI. But Wait, pause. Okay. So where does the uh, business, master's in business administration come in? Oh, it makes uh, me a good manager, doesn't it? Well, yeah, it does. <laughs> I mean, but that just seems it's a, ba- a master of science. Right. Right. And business. So where does that? I know we're getting into this, but where does that fall into the science category? Uh, or are you just sort of like overachiever and said, "I'm going to go get me an MBA today." I, I really just wanted to do the MBA. Yes. Sweet. <laughs> Love school. <laughs> yes, go school. Um, prior to coming to the York County Sheriff's Office, I worked in uh, California for the San Diego Sheriff's Department Regional Crime Laboratory, hmm. and I worked there for about uh, just under 12 years. And there I was also assigned to the forensic biology section, and I also participated in the crime scene investigation teams and was a blood spatter um, analyst there as well. Blood spatter analyst. Yes. Well, let's go back. San Diego. Or San Diego. San Diego. (laughs) How's Ron Ron Burgundy say it? (laughs) Right. San Diegans. San Diegans. But uh, how, how do you go from beautiful, sunny Southern California, San Diego to... <clears throat> York County, South Carolina. I mean, not that we don't live in a great place, but San Diego, York County. What's up with that? 
Well, it's uh, yeah, San Diego is a very different place to York County, but I wish I had discovered York County a long time ago. Mm. It fits my lifestyle a little bit better than San Diego as far as I enjoy the rural atmosphere of York County. I have horses that I brought with me from San Diego, and I don't deal with commuting and traffic anymore. So I love that. <laughs> well, good. Is it, is it true that it never rains in Southern California? It doesn't rain often. There you go. Well, now you get a plenty of it here. <laughs> Typically 75 and beautiful. So, That's yeah. right. Well, <laughs> but it's m- much better here. But well, um, So you get all these degrees, but somewhere along the way you go, that's what I want to do. That's that's the job I want. Forensic biology. I want to be the DNA person. Was it? Did you watch a show like CSI and go, oh, man, I'm going to be that, that guy who goes and finds a little piece of something, a hair, and solve a crime within an hour. Is that what it was? Well, I kind of predate the CSI franchise. No, you're and, young. Uh, you're my age. Don't, yeah. don't, don't make yourself sound old. <laughs> well, they didn't have the CSI TV shows on that were, um, when I was in high school and such, mm-hmm. but um, they did have uh, the X-Files, of course. Oh. That was something I was very interested in. But really, it was about the OJ trial that got me interested in DNA analysis. And mm. the OJ trial was in session while I was in high school, and I knew that then Science was the direction that I wanted to go when mm-hmm. I went to college, and I thought that being um, in, I, I thought about going into the medical field, and so I was an EMT while I went to college. Nice. I and didn't know that about you. Yes, worked as an EMT on an ambulance for three, four, five, three years at least mm-hmm. um, while I was going to college, and then um while I was doing that work, I discovered that I really enjoyed field work, and then I also was an employee of the, uh, a contract employee with the medical examiner's office mm-hmm. that I got into by doing the EMT work, and we would go and transport bodies for the medical examiner's office of San Diego. Oh, wow. So our job was to go and pick up the deceased and take them to medical examiner's office for autopsies, and through that job I had this interest in forensics that grew and so while I was uh, completing my degree and I got a job in biochemistry and um, sorry biotechnology Mm -hmm. and I worked in a lab but I had discovered this whole area of uh, of crime investigation and the idea that I could put science to use in the field Mm -hmm. so I then pursued a certificate in criminal justice after I finished my bachelor's in biochemistry and learned more about forensics. And Mm -hmm. that's kind of where things grew. And it was my mentor in San Diego County that spoke at uh, one of the classes that I was taking who who was able to tell me when a job opened up. Mm. And I got into the San Diego uh, Regional Crime Lab for the sheriff's office there, and um, and that's where it all began. Wow. I, see, I've known you seven years, and I've never known that story. <laughs> right. Ever. And that is the beauty of this podcast. We, not only am I learning a little bit more about you, I'm, you know, everybody else is learning a little bit about you. But <laughs> So you said you predated the CSI craze and all that NCIS where you know, have one person in a lab doing all the forensic stuff from firearms to biology to computer forensics, et cetera, all in one little room cased into it for an hour and they get the, they solve it in an hour. Oh, and, right. and so doing that, did, I'm sure most like many police officers out there, they watch these crime dramas and go, that's not how we do things. Do you watch these shows and go, no, that's not how it works. However, they do use real stuff, right? Right? They do. Um, I, to be honest, I don't know that I've watched a full episode of any of them. Oh my gosh! Are you serious? Yeah. Um, I did. <laughs> is it because watch... you do that on purpose? Like, I don't. I don't want to be mad for the next hour. Yeah, really, it is. <laughs> <laughs> but I did used to watch Bones. I did enjoy that because it was far enough removed. Because hmm. the focus was on anthropology and such. And okay. So because we don't really do anthropology in my line of work, it, it was a lot easier to watch because mm-hmm. I didn't really know if they were doing it right or wrong. <laughs> but the uh, the TV shows, yeah, they do make it uh, make it seem very different than what we do. And mm-hmm. I and I like I said, I've never watched a full episode necessarily, but I have seen plenty of snippets. Oh well. 
How do do you get run into the problem? Like, hey, here's some DNA. Find out who this guy is in the next hour. Do do does that happen, or do people tell you that and you? It's like, no, that's not how it works. Yes, there are definitely challenges to the public having access to these TV programs that aren't true to life, so so to speak. And really the challenges are not only when we go to court to testify because jurors have a false expectation mm -hmm. of how long things should take or how what information we can actually gain from the testing that we do. Mm -hmm. So not only the jurors are a challenge, but also um, even just our investigators can be a challenge sometimes if they're not uh, very familiar with the process, in which mm -hmm. case, you know, uh, DNA doesn't necessarily just happen overnight. Um, in certain circumstances, we can get some answers very mm -hmm. quickly, but yeah, there is a, the, the expectations of what we can do are certainly skewed by what TV tells the public we can do. I mean, have you run into a jury and go, wait, that's not how they do it on television. That lady doesn't know what she's talking about. I don't know what they talk about in the jury room. They might. Oh, that's true. That's right. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> Let's redact that. Let me back up and record. No, I'm just kidding. Okay. Um, so, um, so tell folks what the process is. I mean, say, you know, we have a... Let's just get, well, we won't go with homicide. Let's go with just a simple property crime or something where they, this person's been robbing places over and over and over again. And you finally, you know, the forensics guys go out there and get some swabs off of a, a doorknob. And how, how does that work? We need to find out who this is, who's a serial property crime th thief. How about we set up with a swab of blood from... A broken window. Okay, you you <laughs> name the parameters. I'm just trying to trying to set you up here. Yeah, a swab of blood from a broken window from a, a burglary, a home burglary. Yeah, there we go. Now that is actually quite a frequent uh, type of sample that we would get into the lab. Mm -hmm. um, what we would do first off is try to identify what type of fluid could be present, and so we do a process that, that we call screening, and mm -hmm. essentially we use a chemical test that, uh, that causes um, co a color change uh, of the chemical in the presence of blood or um, and and other the cliff notes version sorry yes okay it's the, so, the cliff notes, <laughs> notes version for joe so, listener out there <laughs> so we would try to determine what type of sample we were dealing with so if we have a chemical positive for the presence of blood we would go for it with the dna analysis procedure which is extracting the dna from cells which is applying chemicals to a sample and getting that dna separated from the cells that it's in and that process of extraction also purifies and concentrates the dna sample that we get we then go through a process of quantitation in which we find out how much dna is actually present and that's important because in order to go forward with the process of PCR, the polymerase chain reaction, we're uh, um, needing to know how much DNA is present to target in order for that process to occur. Mm. So once the amplification takes place, there's you know millions and millions of copies made of the DNA that's present. And those, those DNA fragments are then run on an instrument that gives us the data from which we determine what a profile is. And we can apply statistics to determine the rarity of that profile mm -hmm. and that profile then can then be placed into CODIS which is the combined DNA index system and either the profile gets placed into CODIS or it's compared to a known sample if we have an actual uh, suspect in the case and we can have a reference sample from that suspect we can do a comparison otherwise if there is no sample for comparison purposes we would put the profile from the crime scene into CODIS which would look for a match against a convicted offender database. Mm -hmm. Once we get a match from that, we can go ahead and um, determine, you know, uh, go ahead and have the state confirm the match, and we can provide a name for the detective in that case. Good. Simple. And that happens all within an hour. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 it doesn't. <laughs> That's, well, that's what they make you think on television. But so, you know, you, you see a DNA. DNA is very small. You said it comes from the nucleus of a cell. The cells are very small. Yes. Uh, how do you do, how do you extract the smallness out of something that's already small? 
I mean, is that going to get too out of the Cliff Notes version of it's, DNA? It's a little out of the Cliff Notes version, but it's all based on the chemistry of the DNA molecule. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you can just go downstairs and put it in the robot. and well, you, we, we have a robot. I, I stole the secret there. Yes, we have a robot. We, we do have robotic procedures in place, which allows for consistency of sample preparation and sample extraction and the entire process. Mm -hmm. um, we have the ability to perform each of our processes by hand, mm -hmm. but uh, the robot definitely takes a lot of elements out of um, the process and, and ensures consistent results. This is not a, a Terminator T-1000 walking around down there. It's a big box, right? <laughs> it's a big box. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we call it a robot, but when people are thinking at home, like, oh, a robot? Is it sitting there? You just put your <laughs> DNA sample in here. Right. That thing, nothing. No. Um, but okay, so simple. You can, uh, not an hour. All that process. How long on from fastest to longest does it take? Well, if you're looking at a single sample and mm -hmm. say we've been asked to rush the case, mm -hmm. um, as recently happened in a armed robbery case, there mm -hmm. have been several armed robberies that York County was dealing with, and we were asked to rush um, a sample that was submitted to us by one of the agencies uh, that we work for. Um, and the sample was tested, the actual process was uh, about a day, and then the more time-consuming process is writing the reports and doing the reviews of those reports because a hundred percent of our work is reviewed by another qualified analyst yeah. okay. in order to make sure that our results are um, fitting our quality system okay and that's not the folks you say we you keep saying we there's some other folks that work with you in the lab, right? That's Give correct. them a shout out real quick. Yes, yeah, Bryn and Samantha. <laughs> both of them are great hard workers, and um, both of them are DNA analysts as well. And they, they're they not the ones who review it. It's some an outside analyst, right? You no, know, they review oh, They will review okay. work that I do, and I review work they do. Oh, okay. Well, good. All right. I thought you'd maybe – I know some of the firearms people had to go send it, to send it off to have it analyzed by somebody else, but it's probably because we don't have – another one of those that's correct since so, we only have one firearms examiner they had to set that out yes. good so you all check double check each other that's correct so you said you can get how, how fast was that to get it done you can get the work done the absolute you can you know the, our, the biochemistry done in a day okay 10 hour day we'll say sure. a 10 hour day yes. not an hour on television i don't believe it no but the process though is complicated just because of the fact that you know we have so many samples that are submitted to the lab that not every case gets worked in a day because we usually batch cases and so mm -hmm. we don't work just one case at a time we're working about 10 cases at a time so that adds to the time that a batch of cases takes to go through the process mm -hmm. because now you're not only analyzing 10 samples so multiply the analysis time by 10 multiply the, the um, data analysis by 10 multiply the review time by 10 so it uh, increases our turnaround time to um, it, it affects the turnaround time of each of the samples. So even though we may be able to drop everything and do a rush case in a couple of days mm -hmm. from start to finish into the review process, um, it's, it actually does take quite a bit longer for once the sample is submitted to the lab to the point where a, re a report is produced. Oh, sounds like a lot of work. Much much harder than the, the public information officer office. <laughs> Don't know about that. <laughs> Different skill set. <laughs> Different skill set. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Oh my gosh. So um so you have your lab down there. It's just if folks don't know, it's rare to have an agency to have a DNA lab. There's only what, how many in the state? Five, six? One there, of uh, oh. we are one of uh, four county, uh, four county labs. Yes. Four county labs. Yes, and then there's SLED. SLED. So SLED has an agent, their their laboratory, so they produce uh, DNA work for any of the counties that don't actually have access to a DNA mm -hmm. lab. And then there's Bu Buford, Greenville, Richland County, and us. So that's a it's a luxury to have something like this here. It's correct? Definitely progressive. Oh, good. Yes. Well, I mean, uh, is that? And you said you don't. It's not just the York County lab but you do ask if somebody like rock hill pd or york pd or fort mill need something done they can bring it to you is that right yes so we serve all the agencies in south in york county mm -hmm. um, to what extent they submit work to us in and you do it all we will do it all <laughs> do they actually uh, do they ask for it to be done in an hour 
No, most people do have a good understanding it's not going to be done in an hour. Do you tell them that when they bring it's like, hey, we need this done right now? I don't think everybody ever really has. I think they know that they, or they have the expectation it's going to take some time, but they also do know that if there is a problem and they're having, a, you know, a, a, they have a case that is really important that we will do them on a rush basis. Mm. Like like you said, an armed robbery that we had the other a couple weeks ago. Correct. Um, where it was like this guy was hitting six or seven different stores. Is yes. that what the one was? And or restaurants. And then that was like, hey, let's find out who this is before he hits number seven or eight, yes. right? And that's yep. and that was a that was what you define as a rough rush case. Correct. Right. Yes. So, well, good. Um, you know, every year they always talk about. You know, we have used to used to during COVID. Right now, there's no open houses really here, but there we we always get kids for who are in high school or even middle school saying, "That's what I want to do. I've saw it on television. That's what I want to do in life. I like biology and I like labs and stuff like that." Um, you have explained that I've done this. I've gone to school for this. I like science. I took the steps to get where I'm at now. If you were talking to a high school class or a biology class and somebody was like, I watch CSI and NCIS. I want to be that person who's in the lab and wears a white coat and does all this stuff. That's what I want to do. What is the, the advice you would give to a young student who is looking to get into forensic biology? Not necessarily discouraging them but telling them the process of okay this is what you want to do this is how you got to do it yes well i often do speak with uh job shadows and that that come through the lab um my advice to any of them is essentially that if you want if you like science if you enjoy science that's the place where you first have to be in Mm -hmm. order to do this job because it's heavily science-based and it's you you have to understand the science that is uh, that that you're doing. Um, second of all, I tell them to make sure they keep their backgrounds clean because mm-hmm. we never know what we're going to end up being when we quote unquote grow up. Right. So if you don't know what you want to do, wouldn't it be best to keep your options over and uh, open and always have the opportunity to do something like, you know, go into a law enforcement career. Mm-hmm and not have to worry about your past and whether or not that'll preclude you from being a candidate for a job. Yep. And so what kind of, I mean, if they just start out and do well in science in high school and then say, okay, I've done well in science in high school. I go to college. What do I do now? Study science in college. What? Like what? You uh, study, in order to be a DNA analyst, for instance, you would need to study uh, a, a science-based curriculum, so a molecular biology degree or biochemistry degree or biology degree or chemistry degree, mm-hmm. and to make sure that you hit the FBI's required courses for being a DNA analyst, which are uh, forensic genetics, or I'm sorry, just genetics, biochemistry, molecular biology, and statistics. Statistics, yes. the math part. The math part. A, a master's in business administration probably would come in <laughs> handy. No? Uh, yes? Well, <laughs> I did take stats in, in my MBA program, but not necessarily the type we use. <laughs> so, so you go and do that. You get all these. You get a molecular biology degree. Do you need a master's or anything like that? Or just, I mean, how does that work? No, no, and to be a DNA analyst, you just need a forensic, or I'm sorry, a science-based curriculum and uh, uh, for your college bachelor's program, and those four classes that I named. And once you have a bachelor's degree in science or a forensic science-related field, then you qualify uh, with the minimum requirements to be a DNA analyst. So you don't have to have a master's in order to go forward into mm-hmm. the position of a DNA analyst, but you do have to have a master's to uh, be in my position, which is a DNA technical leader. Okay. Well, goals, life goals, keep moving, do, do well in school, learn, learn, learn. And cause it, you learning never stops though. Like you say, you like school. Correct. I mean, <laughs> but if you're going to do this job, things change all the time. Correct. The technology changes, the process changes. Just oh, yes. like, you've got to be a lifelong learner. Correct. Yes, most certainly. There's educational require, or I'm sorry, continuing education requirements on an annual basis that we have to uh, uh, be able to complete. 
Um, there's always new technology coming up. The way that we do things now is very different than when I started in the business. Mm -hmm. And when I started, it, uh, the lab work was the majority of the time that you spent doing the science. And mm -hmm. then you spent you know, a little bit of time doing reports. Well, now it's the opposite. There's a lot more time spent doing reports than there is doing the lab work just because we have all the automation now we can handle more samples at one time so mm -hmm. we spit out more data each time that we go through the process so the office work is now the majority of time that we spend doing um, our jobs okay one thing we didn't mention here at the York County Sheriff's Office you are a certified class three law enforcement officer correct that's correct you're not but you're not like the guy on CSI who you know goes out to crime scenes and you know with the you know, gun, you know, on your hip and everywhere. I mean, you probably do, but I mean, it's that a lot of people probably think it's like a lot of action in between going out to the field, picking up the DNA, bringing it back yourself. Right. There, there's a process. You, we, we have forensic officers who do that, correct? That's correct. But you are a certified officer. That's correct. Just like me. Yes. And special teams. That's special teams. We're specialists. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> might, might have to delete that. Right. But anyway. <laughs> So, and, uh, anything else? I mean, you know, if somebody calls and says, hey, I'd like to, you know, be a intern or something like that. We do interns, correct? On occasion, depending on the situation the lab's in, we have taken interns in the past to uh, come in and do some work on uh, learning how we do our job and so on and so forth. But um, it just depends on where the lab's at at the time as far as validation projects and training of new analysts and so mm -hmm. on and so forth so um it's it's one of those things we consider just depends on timing okay all right well just just for the folks the kids out there listening because we do get the requests yes we do get the requests of people wanting to know more about it and it, but it's not something you have to put in the work and some science education before coming in and becoming an intern right because it's just you know we can't just oh i want to try this out this ain't, this ain't a try out period to see if you want to do it right mm, that's correct we'd prefer you to have some kind of science behind you all right well good well hopefully some you've inspired a, a person out there to become a forensic biologist uh, i'm thinking to myself like Holy smokes, that's a lot of education. I'm not smart at math. I'm not smart at science. Although I do like to, you know, watch the the the, the stuff on the, you know, on television. Right. <laughs> and like, I can do that. Right. That must, that's so easy. <laughs> but when when you explain it, don't don't be discouraged by all the education that you have to do because you get you can get to the point of becoming a forensic biologist. That's correct. All good. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you, Emily, for being with us today on the behind the badge and we did get a little look behind the badge of forensic biology and hopefully we have dispelled a lot of myths and rumors on how dna works and how it's not just necessarily the way you see it on television probably made a whole bunch of people mad because they're going to go watch those television now shows now and go oh man that's not what she said on the re the podcast <laughs> yeah they're they're faking this tv show and then <laughs> all the <laughs> shows it's great will, drama it's yeah great it's drama. great drama they'll lose ratings and that's all because of us <laughs> here on the ycso behind the badge podcast Thank you, Trent. well good all right folks just remember go check us out on our facebook and our twitter and instagram and linkedin pages you get a lot of cool information about that and you can also listen to this podcast and sign up and uh, subscribe for the podcasts at your local favorite podcasting source we're on the anchor podcast apple podcast google podcasts and spotify just to name a few of the big big ones there and please do us a favor and sign up for those notify me alerts when something big happens in the county like uh that's significant we almost put a notify me alert about the armed robbery cases but we found that person before we had to do it um, but we, we will send you information to your phone when something big happens out in the county so you're first informed by us here at the York County Sheriff's Office. And we also do that on our Facebook pages. We always try to give you some information, news you can use about what's going on locally here in York County, right where you live. And thank you for joining us in on this week of the Behind the Badge, the YCSO Behind the Badge podcast. And please join us again next week. Have a great day. <laughs>